All right, so welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Heihachi. We're going to be doing the whole breakdown for this character, and uh, I'm going to pretty much go over everything I can about the character, all the notes I have in front of me, um, telling you how you're going to approach playing Heihachi. Pretty much like what I did for the Kazuya tutorial. Um, I don't know as much about Heihachi as I do Kazuya, but I've spent uh, more or less the same amount of time with the character. Um, he's always been my secondary, my main secondary next to Kazuya. He was always my second pick from Tekken 1 all the way up till now. Um, he's a little bit different in this game compared to how we're used to Heihachi being from previous Tekken iterations. Uh, he was very rushed down, poke-oriented character that had some very, very oppressive mids with his down forward one being minus one on block um, that you could pretty much just throw that out and spam that in the neutral and just keep up the pressure with his crazy, crazy mids in past games, in especially in Tekken 7 and Tag Tournament 2 but in Tekken 8, he's a little bit different he doesn't really have uh, the same tool utility that he did in those older games so uh, let's let's break it down a little bit what is Heihachi for the character breakdown uh, Heihachi is a Mishima of course he's a fucking Mishima he's got all the Mishima tricks obviously he's got the four hallmarks that a Mishima character requires to be considered a Mishima archetype he's obviously got the 112 flash punch he's got the uh, patented electric he's got the hell sweep and of course Heihachi has a wave dash first off he's a Mishima uh, archetype, he's not really a 50-50 monster because he has bad lows compared to uh, characters like Kazuya and even Devil Jim because Heihachi's Hell Sweep doesn't launch on normal hit or doesn't knock down on normal hit, so no reason really to duck Heihachi ever. Um, so that's one of the character's weaknesses, but his mids are so strong that they kind of make up for that weakness. He's still a very uh, poke heavy powerhouse, he does a shit ton of damage, and he's extremely hard to pilot, much like his son Kazuya. As far as being hard to pilot, I still consider Kazuya a lot harder than Heihachi and Devil Jim, uh, because Devil Jim is just very weak right now, and Heihachi doesn't seem like he's all that weak compared to Devil Jim. I think he's stronger than Kazuya and Devil Jim currently, but that's, that's just my personal opinion. Just because of the type of game that Tekken 8 is, it being so uh, aggressive and attack oriented, not a whole lot of room for defense in Tekken 8. Of course, there is always going to be defensive play in, in every Tekken game, but offense is king in this game, and this character is a fucking offense machine. So, Heihachi's amazing. But let's talk about the top 10 to 15 moves that Heihachi has. So, right off the bat, jab, number one. His jab actually hits at range 2.04 uh, against Chaoyu, which means he's got the fourth best jab in the game tied with Brian. Brian's got a, a higher hitbox though, he's got a pretty pretty vertical hitbox. Uh, it, it, it's a very high hitting jab, so a lot of moves can actually high crush Brian's jab. Same problem, not doesn't exist with Ayachi. His, his jab is a little better than Brian's in that sense, even though it, it's just as good in terms of range. It has more of a vertical hitbox, so it, it won't be uh, as easy to crush from certain moves as Brian's will be. But it's, it's So it's a hell of a lot better than Kazuya's, it's a hell of a lot better than Devil Jin's. Uh, it's, it's up there with Jin's jab, with being a really fucking solid jab. You also have down forward one which uh, it tracks to sidestep right, but the smallest sidestep left will make this move with, plus it's minus five on block. So it's not as spammable. Both of these moves, the extension, down forward one one, and down forward one alone, both minus five on block. But both of the, these tools, down forward one one and down forward one, are pressure tools, because with down forward one especially, which is what you want to go for, don't, don't throw this out, because the second hit is a high. People can duck this and launch you on reaction. Uh, so don't just spam that shit all the fucking time. If the down forward one is blocked, then the down forward one one can then be ducked and you can die. So just keep that in mind. I see a lot of lower level Heiachi players just doing this shit willy nilly. Cut it out. You're going to get killed once you start getting out of the shitty ranks. So down forward one, really good. Plus seven on hit. Plus minus, or sorry, minus five on block. So not the greatest poke in the neutral, but. You can change down forward one, two up and add some different timing to the move. 
And down forward one, two, with no delay, just down forward one, two, is a natural combo. Down forward one, slight delay, two, which means you hold two for a split second and then you let it go. You get that little blue spark. That move there. You can sidestep this if the down forward one bl is blocked. Or you can interrupt with a jab. Or something that's something else that's fast, like a 12, 13 frame move, something like that. Um, so because the down forward one is minus five on block, it that minus five contributes to the to the inactive frames, uh, or so the active frames of the move, and the second hit then becomes interruptible. The third uh, variation is down forward one hold two, which gives you a very similar effect to like uh, what Raijin Stance Two did in. Uh, Tekken 7 gives the, char the, the uh, character sort of a spin, uh, spinning effect as they fall, as they get knocked down. It doesn't wall splat, but this is plus one on block, this move here, if you charge it to the max. So down forward 1-2 now has some decent utility. Uh, you can either do this straight up and make it, as long as you keep doing this and it keeps connecting, uh, down four one two, pretty soft. Thirty damage, natural combo, decent thirteen frame punish for Hiachi. Plus it gives plus three on hit. And the uh, the biggest thing is, if they try to interrupt or sidestep after the down forward one is blocked, the down forward two will then hit them. So it, if you don't delay it at all, so mixing up the timing with down forward one two really does make a difference and it really does contribute heavily to Heihachi's poke game and his top 10, top 15 moves. Obviously, um, as we talked about, the electric is so incredibly valuable for this character. It's uh, it's easier to do now because he's got the perfect electric input and I'm dropping a lot of electrics because, you know, YouTube shit. But it's, uh, it's, it's his best tool. You're going to be doing electric more often than not. This, that move is so useful for Heihachi. He relies on it a lot more now than ever. So Electric, obviously an amazing move. Uh, this is the other go-to tool that you're pretty much going to be using with Heihachi non-stop. 1-1-2 one, one, and Electric, your two best friends. Down forward one will, next, will probably be your next tool. Uh, next to that you also have up four three four Long range, uh, plus four on block move. That has a little bit more tracking than it did in Tekken 7. The tracking is somewhat improved to sidestep left and right. So you really have to give it a, a big side walk with most characters to avoid up forward three when they're hitting it from a certain distance. When they're respecting you and you're in their face, you can throw it up forward three, four, and it's a plus four on block move that's quite slow, 18 or 28 frames to impact. So it can easily be interrupted and it has a little bit of tracking and it's plus four on block. So the counterplay is quite simple, but if, if they're respecting you, it's a very effective move. Forward four is the other move I have to recommend. Plus four on block, no longer forces crouch on block, but uh, it's still a fantastic move because no matter what, any move that's plus on block is gonna be one of your go-to moves, regardless. So forward four, not as good as Kazuya's forward four. I wouldn't even say it's as good as Reina's forward four because at least that one forces crouch as well but still a fantastic forward four that you can then down forward two in, or jab. Forward four into electric, classic little setup with Mishima's, uh, but yeah, fantastic move. But they can sidestep both directions no matter what after they block the move, so just be aware of that. It's not quite as good as Kazuya's anymore. Uh, we also have um, back two, which is plus two on block, unless you do the semi-charged version, which is the blue spark version. Or the Gold Spark version. Pretty much both of them are the exact same. Gold Spark does a little bit more damage. It's hard to do. It's like a perfect just frame. You hold back to for a, like not even a second, like a, I don't know, 25% of a second. And you get this. If you hold back to and just let it come out, you get that. And then you can get an easy Iron Hand for 54 damage. After that is a follow-up if the opponent eats the fully charged back two. So great move because even though back two that's not charged is still plus two on block, plus seven on hit. Fantastic move. And if you want to use down back two, mixing it up with back two is a solid idea. Because this move and this move look the same, even though Heihachi says different things. 
They look the same, they have almost the same frames to impact. So you really can just mix those two up, but I don't recommend this move. This move is trash. Avoid down back two like the plank. If you're of the opinion that down back two is a good move, you are playing in, sh in, in lower ranks, and a lot of players are just eating this fucking move because they can't react to it, they haven't been exposed to it enough. They Once you hit like Tekken God and up, you are going to die every every time you throw this move out, almost, more or less. You might nail this once or twice, but even nailing it once or twice is not worth throwing it out because if they block it once, they deal a lot more damage to you than you do to them with two or three hits of this move because they get a full launch, full combo. This thing is minus 18 on block. So terrible move. Everyone in the entire cast can launch it for full combo, full damage, 100 plus, and all you get is a measly fucking 25 damage. With, with, it, they, it, the move doesn't even do anything. It knocks them far away, so you don't really get to advance anymore with this type of shit, with this kind of uh, uh, lazy ass setup, because they're knocked far away. One little backdash and they're out of range of both of those techniques. So that won't work anymore. Um, and there is really nothing else to it. They, they, they are in crouching status after they get hit by it, but that's it. They're so far away that that plus six frames you get, it's not even gonna be enough to capitalize on anything because you'd still have to move in after the plus six. So just, you're risking your life for 25 damage and there's no frame advantage really to be had because it, it, it essentially resets the neutral. Not a good move anymore. It never really was, but it's even worse than it used to be. So this move is maybe Heihachi's worst move. Don't bother fucking using it. Unless you're in purple ranks and you really want to develop some bad habits, or blue ranks even, Blue ranks Heihachis and purple ranks Heihachis will abuse this and perhaps get away with it. But as soon as you get out of those ranks, you're going to start dying and it's going to be too late by that point because you've already developed the bad habit of abusing that move and now it's just going to be like muscle memory. You're going to throw it out now and again and die and you're going to be upset about it. So just don't bother learning it in the first place and you'll be fine. Um, but back two is great. 4-1 back 2 is one of Heihachi's best pokes, and it still exists in the game. 4-1 back 2 is plus 8 on hit, and if they block it, it's only minus 2. So you can just try jabbing again, because your jab then just becomes a 12 frame jab. No big deal if they don't try to jab check you. If they do anything slower than jab, essentially, when they're minus 2, they're either going to trade if they hit you with a 12 frame move or any other move, like usually like they'll try to do a down forward 1, 13 frame poke. This shit you can just loop and it'll interrupt all their offense. So, and then you can just continue your pressure from there. Plus 8 into, you can even do this, hold down, and he'll go into uh, Wind God Kame or Fujin Stance. I call this Fujin because fuck it, I'm lazy. So Fujin Stance, and then you can do other shit. If this hits, then the stance ship that comes out after that is all pretty much interu uninterruptible. Um, unless you go for um, um, this shit here. That's interruptible. But everything else, no. Plus 8 is too much and they won't be able to interrupt anything. So, very, very strong tech, uh, very, very strong uh, pokes there. 443, another fantastic move with Ahachi. Uh, you're gonna do this into a uh, big combo. It, it's the same as electric, you get the exact same combos as you do with electric that you do with 443, that you do with 442. So, very good move for that reason. And once you're in the uh, warrior instinct, which we'll talk about later, 443 becomes plus one on block, not minus three anymore. So, amazing fucking move. 442, one of his best um, uh, mid launching tools, but very punishable this time around, and doesn't have as much tracking anymore either. So, this is a move that's good, but should be used sparingly, because a lot of players can get some pretty hefty damage for you throwing that move out. So, don't abuse 442. Make sure you're acknowledging when your opponent punishes it consistently. Stop doing it, because they, they know what they're doing and you're not placing it properly. So, place it better, or stop doing it entirely. Those are your options with 442. Use it, but don't abuse it. Back 4 is another good move that you should use, but not abuse, because it has great properties when it uh, hits on a counter hit. 
However, it's it, you know it's also solid when you knock down it, as a normal hit because it knocks down, it gives a wall splat, everything. But if it whiffs, you're recovering for 20 years after that. Look at that shit. That entire animation gets it, it's just, you're fucked. I'm so minus. I'm so my. I wish the frame advantage would show up on width because that is crazy. You are so minus. Your opponent has enough time to fucking shake your hand and then launch you, and and it's it's insane, man. So back four on width is death. Uh, back four on block, very solid. Minus eight on block, which means it's safe. Uh, but don't do this close to uh, Yoshimitsu in no sword stance because Yoshi will punish you with flash. Because Yoshi can launch punish minus eight in no sword stance because flash is bullshit. But every other character, back four is solid on block, uh, and it's solid on normal hit, and it's amazing on counter hit. It does some hefty fucking damage. So good move, use it, don't abuse it. Hell sweep is the other thing. It's his only really good low. The other lows he's got are this shit, and and uh, some stance lows. So he's got this stuff. But the only good low that I would recommend to anybody is just the Hell Sweep because it tracks fairly well to both sides. It's plus eight on hit. It uh, is, is it's solid for following up with shit. You can do who knows, like whatever you want to do after this is pretty much fair game because Heihachi's plus eight. Your opponent can't really do shit. You've got utility with Hell Sweep if you just do the Hell Sweep or Hell Sweep four, or if you know they're gonna block it. The second hit, you can Hell Sweep and then do the uh, Hell Sweep 1 into uh, uh, Demon Uppercut. So, or not Demon Uppercut, but you know, uh, Wind God fucking whatever, uh, Thunder God Fist, that's the move. So, the Hell Sweep is decent for getting some plus frames and a little bit of damage, and it's his best low, but it's, it's not gonna be, like, it's not even scary out of Wave Dash, really. So, it, again, there's not really any reason to duck Heihachi when that's the most threatening attack he has as a low. Uh, again, this move is terrible. Don't fucking use it unless you really, unless you can see that your opponent cannot react to it at all, and you haven't built that bad habit up to just use this as a neutral tool, as a as a pressure tool. If that's not a bad habit, you don't have any muscle memory built in there, and you just know that hey, my opponent cannot see this. He can't react to it at all. Cool. Abuse it. But it's not a good move besides that. So if, as soon as they punish it once and launch you for it, don't fucking do it anymore. Uh, QCF2 is the other good move. Iron Hand, because that move is Heiachi's long range punish. So you're gonna do this as uh, a move to punish people's stuff like uh, uh, Heiachi's Demon Uppercut, like you saw there. A 4 4 2, minus 16 on block. Has a little bit of pushback, so you have to do your long range punish to punish that move effectively, and Aachi gets Iron Hand for that. Plus, it's a heat engager. And the last move we're gonna talk about is Demon Paw, as far as Aachi's best tools goes. Demon Paw is obviously 4 4 1 plus 2 with Aachi, and it's a heat engager, and it's. it's a very fantastic Demon Paw. There's nothing bad to say about the move. So that's that's it for Aachi's uh, top 10 to 15 moves. Those are the ones that you pretty much want to throw out in the neutral to apply pressure and uh, run your offense. Next up we have Punishment for Aachi. I kind of covered this a little bit in my previous video, so feel free to check that out. I'll leave a, a little card here up on the top screen here. Uh, click on the, the, the Punishment. It's basically a, a video about how to learn new characters. And I really touch Aachi's, I go into detail about Aachi's Punishment there, but I'm going to reiterate real quick. Um, at 10 frames, Heiachi has 1-1-2, one, one, which wall splats for a full follow-up combo. I know that's fucking insane, but that's just the case. So, you know, you can do all kinds of crazy shit. If I wanted to, I could put Heiachi all the way to the wall. And for max damage there, if I got it, it would have been 60 damage. For a 1-1-2 10 frame punish, uh, that's fucking nuts. And that wasn't even max damage because I could have done a heat combo that's stronger than that. So, yeah, 60 damage combo for a 1-1-2 10 frame punish at the wall. That's pretty nuts. At 12 frames, he's got this move or this move. Both moves are 12 frames fast. Well, I mean, this is technically 11, but it's a 12 frame punish. This is his 11 frame. This is his 12 frame into Iron Hand. 
that's probably the, the thing you want to do more often than not is forward one plus two and iron hand which then in, it engages your heat engager and um, that's your full 12 frame punish guaranteed uh, at 13 Heihachi has down forward for two which you can actually delay quite some time so this is just doing it straight up You can hit confirm this move, see if it connects, and then, there you go, that's the max delay right there. So, if this move connects, and you see that it does, you can get the two out at the last second, and get a full, uh, natural combo for that. It is Heiachi's 13 frame punish, though, so just let this rip when you know your opponent's at minus 13, and you think they're too far away for Heiachi's 12 frame, uh, head stone, head stop, whatever the fuck it's called, uh, head butt. At 14 frames, he's got back 1-4. Uh, 15, you know, you're pretty much going to be launching 15 frames with, uh, with electric. Um, you can launch 13 and 14 frame moves with electric, but that's, come on, let's be fucking real here. Electric is going to be your 15 frame punish, or down 4, 3, 1 plus 2, 1. Down 4, 3, 1 plus 2, QCF 1 is also, uh, all guaranteed for 49 damage as Heihachi's 15 frame punish, so... There's that. And then, of course, like I said, his long-range punish is Iron Hand, QCF2. So there's the uh, standing punishment for uh, while standing. He's got uh, while standing 4-4. Four, four, <coughs> excuse me. While standing 4-4 four, four in the stance. If you hold down, which puts it in, uh, puts Heiachi at plus 6. So he, he can, if they try to do anything after that, Heiachi can launch them. He can get a heat engager. He can do all kinds of shit. So, Heiachi is uh, pretty crazy as far as while standing punishment goes, because he's got his 13 frame punish as well, with this in the Iron Hand, or you can also do uh, Omen Thunder God Fist, both versions, obviously, so there's the, the standard version and then the uh, just frame version, which is max damage at 47 damage for a 13 frame while standing punish. Pretty solid, almost as good as Kazuya's Twin Pistons. I would say it rivals it in terms of how good it is for not only for damage, but because the range of this is so good, Heiachi can punish a lot of shit that leaves the opponent pretty far away after they nail you with the move. Kazuya can't really do that with Twin Pistons, because the range on his Twin Pistons is shit. The trade-off is Kazuya gets a full, da a full combo for a 63 plus damage, and Heiachi gets, you know, 47 damage max. That's if your execution is fully on point. 43 damage typically, and this is what I'll just go for normally. So 41 damage on average is what you're going for. So, not too bad, but nothing too crazy either. And then at 15 frames, he has full crouch down forward too. So punishment is uh, fucking crazy with this character. Yeah, she's got some crazy punishment, crazy damage, and... I would say his punishment is next to Kazuya's, probably the best in the game. For Heiachi's basic poke game, he's got an actual poke game unlike his son, who, who doesn't have shit for pokes, but his jab is, like I said, better than Kazuya's. Very, very good jab. Fourth best jab in the game, really, as far as range goes, anyways. Down forward one, and uh, down forward one, two mix-ups. The delays and everything. Uh, really fan-fucking-tastic poke game. If you want, you can even poke with down back three. It's minus two on hit, minus thirteen on block. So quite, uh, you know, it's people can get a hefty punish for blocking this move, but it's it's a it's really a decent low poke. It's kind of like uh, Devil Jin's broken plate, except this has slightly better range. So down back three for Ayachi. He's never had anything like this before, as far as low pokes go. So he can actually get some real decent damage with 10 damage as a low poke, only minus 2 odd block, and he's not risking his life by doing the low. So that's a solid little low to throw out in the neutral. It's not going to make you gain any momentum, but what it can do is it can uh, create mind game opportunities for, for you and your opponent, because if your opponent just eats a low, they, they automatically think, oh shit, it's not my turn anymore, even though technically it still is their turn. You can do down back three into potential jab check, or down back three into back one plus two, which is, you know, a heat engager slash punch parry. So you can, you know, obviously if they try to do anything after uh, creating offense, after you, you uh, run your offense with down back three, and they try to, 
you know, uh, retaliate, you can back one plus two that shit and uh, potentially parry what they have coming up next and then get a free heat engager on top of that. So back three, or down back three, sorry. Not a bad little move, especially if you know your opponent is going to attack immediately after, then you can take advantage with the parry. So, solid little uh, setup that Heiachi has. The down four ones, like I said, are fantastic. Obviously, you're going to be using electric. Electric is is going to be the main main tool you use with Heiachi no matter what. It's 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 the fucking electric, and Heiachi's electric is so important to him now. Um, forward four is the other one I would say is good for poking, and uh, I'd say that's about it. So forward four, down forward one, jab. And then electric, and every now you get, and now and then you can throw in a down back three into the you know down back three into back one plus two. Uh, throw that out in the neutral. Start going for some combos. You know this is the essentially the poke game that Ayachi is going to be going for. Don't like I said, don't go for uh, down back two. Solid pressure tools, a lot better than Kazuya's and better than Devil Jin's. So as far as the Mishimas go. He's really only below Reyna in terms of the poke game and keeping the uh, the offense running in in favor of you the entire time. Reyna can pretty much dictate the match in her favor with almost any character because her pokes are so strong. Heihachi's not quite that good with his pokes, but he's a lot better off than Kazuya and Devil Jin. So, still solid pokes with Heihachi. Next up, let's go over the homing moves a little bit. We have back three, obviously. Solid little homing move. It keeps the opponent from uh, pressing anything. And if they... Uh, or sorry, not pressing, but stepping you. And if they get hit by uh, back three, then back three three is guaranteed. It's not delayable. You have to commit. But if you know they're going to step you, just back three three. It is minus 12 on block. So be careful of that because they get their while standing four after that if they block it, but it's still back three on its own. Fantastic little homie move at 14 frames, and the range on it isn't terrible either. So uh, up forward four is the other one. You even get a follow up with up forward four. You can get uh, for just forward forward two, demon uppercut. After up forward four, I do recommend trying to get the omen. So, you know, try to practice that as best you can. Uh, it's tricky because omen is the same input as electric, essentially just with one instead of two. Um, so it is a just frame timing, and you can't really combo with Omen Thunder Godless anymore, but it still exists in the game, and you can still do it after things like this. You know, that is the best follow-up you can do for while standing one, and obviously doing Omen a a after uh, um, you land an up forward two. Or, uh, sorry, up forward four is, is a very uh, handy follow-up, but if you're not in the mood for being ha heavy on the execution, then just demon uppercut that shit and you get guaranteed damage after, but this is a fantastic homing move, so, uh, you know, abuse the shit out of it. It also wall splats, as you saw there, so very good move, just remember it's very slow. It's 24 frames to impact, so if you're not, if you're right in their face, try not using this move. If they're right in your face, stepping you, back three is your best friend. If they're a little further away, and they're stepping you, then four, uh, up forward four is your best friend. Also, Hell Sweep, just the first hit, has very solid tracking to both sides. It's not uh, a homing move, but because it's just a, a standard ass little kick, um, that's it's really not as scary as the other Hell Sweeps in the game, they gave him a little more tracking uh, with the move. So that's kind of the trade off. It's the same level of punishment, like it's still minus 23 on block, so if somebody blocks this move, then Heiachi dies, but it catches an opponent, and at least it's a way of getting in on the opponent by and potentially getting some some guaranteed damage if you know they're not going to block low. So this move back three, up forward four, and Hell Sweep. Uh, those are the well the two homing moves, and then the low that tracks quite well for Heihachi. Considering how linear Heihachi is, sidestepping and sidewalking Heihachi destroys this character. He's very linear to both sides, pretty much. So, if you want an easy way to beat Heihachi, then sidestepping is your friend. So, Heihachi needs ways to get around that, and those three moves are your answers to that. So, there you go. As far as heat is concerned, he's got up forward 4 2, uh, 4 1, which is 47 damage. Doesn't guarantee any follow ups there, but it's a homing move that's mid, that's plus 2 on block, that does some decent ship damage, that then allows for some pretty significant Oki setups after that, and 
I love this fucking move. Fantastic move. On top of that, he's got down three, one plus two, which you can end some combos with and get some significant damage at the end of a combo with. Pretty solid in that regard. Hayachi also has a wall splatting heat smash. Which I can't stand. Ridiculous damage for something that I don't feel even should exist in this game. Wall splatting heat smashes are not healthy for the game. He has a second heat smash that also floor breaks for full combo. If you ha are you on a stage that has a floor break, then that's the heat smash you want to go for unless you're close to the wall. Then you can do this heat smash, which is just heat smash and hold forward. And the other one is just heat smash, let go of the buttons and just let him let him do his thing. Both of them are 50 damage. One of them breaks the floor, one of them wall splats. I don't agree with the wall splatting heat smashes, those need to go universally, but he has some very solid tools in that regard. Even if, even if heat smashes uh, uh, that wall splatted were taken away universally for every character, this heat smash would still see utility in, in, in matches uh, where you're in a stage that have a breakable wall. Uh, breakable floors, this heat smash will see utility. Or, if you just want some better Oki after the heat smash, then you can just do this heat smash and that this one gives far better Oki game. The other one sends them flying far away. So both of them have utility and he has a complete package with both. So, I'd say stick to using these tools this at the end of a combo, although it is neutral on block, so it's not the worst thing in the world if you want to just throw it out in the neutral, but, uh, you know, down three, kind of a slow move, you, you might want to be careful with this one, but, uh, and then the heat smashes are the, are the other thing, and obviously heat dash out of uh, Demon Paw, very, very useful tool to have. You know, because that's just like a mini combo there, and it's already 76 damage, so his heat is really fucking strong, um, some of the best heat in the game because that heat smash is so good. The only thing is, it's extremely linear, as this entire character is in general, so be aware of the fact that his heat smash, both of them, will be easily stepped to either direction and you could potentially get launched. So, just make sure they're not stepping you when you go to throw out the heat smash. As for Heiachi's wall pressure game, uh, he doesn't really have anything significant like Kazuya does against the wall, except for this shit. The wall splatting 112 is pretty fucking devastating. As you can see there, you know, it's pretty insane how strong a wall splatting 112 can be. The fact that he has a wall splatting heat smash on top of that makes his wall pressure, his wall game, just insane to deal with. You can also mix this shit up. You know, you can even bound with the, uh, the, uh, the sort of just frame timed down forward one, two. So, it's a bound move. Essentially what you want to do when you get a wall splat, and you're in this kind of a position, you want to do back one, four, if for a, a, a bound at the wall into down four, three, one plus two, one. And then obviously one plus two, perfect timed, uh, down 4, 3, 1 plus 2, QCF1 is a just frame. You have to input that pr correctly. Down 4, 3, 1 plus 2, QCF1, you'll get the blue sparks there at the end with the punch, and it's very difficult to time. You have to kind of figure out when to input the QCF1. It's not just spam that shit, but against the wall, it's not that much of a, ma uh, of a damage difference. And just spam this shit. 71 damage versus... Uh, 74 damage if I get the just frame timing. So, it's really not that big of a difference if you don't nail the just frame timing. It's really only a 3 damage difference. But that 3 damage can mean the difference between you uh, killing the opponent and them being allowed one more final mix-up, uh, which could potentially cost you the match sometimes in this game. So, I'd say, you know, it's okay to spam it, but try going for the just frame timing anyways, because it really doesn't matter. You're going to complete the combo if you just hit the one button, no matter what. I'm also going to briefly mention his Raijin 2. It's a guard break, which then allows a free 1-1-2 one, one, into full combo at the wall, into that kind of damage. That's what you get for a guard break uh, against Eihachi. So Raijin 2, which is a high, 
it does guard break. Pretty strong move. And against the wall, especially because 1-1-2 one, one, wall splats, very dangerous combination. So, you know, you do get some pretty significant damage for all that. So, and if he's in Warrior Instinct, Warrior Instinct is even more ridiculous. It's not as broken and, and brain dead as a lot of players seem to iterate that it is, but it's significantly strong, and we're going to talk about Warrior Instinct, which is the special uh, status that Heiachi gets once you have all three tokens. Um, we'll discuss that in a second. All right, now let's go over some combos. Uh, I'm going to have Heiachi do... Pretty much the same combo after every launcher, so we'll go with uh, electric. I'm going to have the inputs down below that you can see there. Uh, but every combo with Ehachi is very similar. The combo that I do, and then the combo a lot of players like to do, I'll, I'll show both of them. So here's my favorite combo. So 108 damage for a full wall combo and everything like that. You get uh, for that's just a standard electric combo, the one that I like to go for. Um, the favorite for a lot of players out there who uh, seem to really love the triple electric combos is this. A lot of people like to go for that one. It's a bit more damage. It's 111 damage for virtually the same thing. You can get the uh, up forward 3 4 um, spin a Rooney into Heat Burst uh, with the combo that I showed first, the one I like to do, but it's a little bit easier with the triple electric combo. The only difference is one has better wall carry, and uh, this combo here does a little bit more damage and is a little bit harder to do with the three, with the three electrics. So it's really uh, pick your poison. You can get more or less the same damage from two electrics that you can with three electrics in this game. So, with with Heihachi. So, it, it's just the way the combos seem to work out. So, that combo there that you just saw, you can translate that and copy and paste it with literally any launcher that you do with Heihachi. I'm going to demonstrate that now. So there's the same combo from forward forward two. Same combo from forward forward three. Same combo from counter hit back four, as you can see there, fucking insane damage on that one. And even up four, three, four. Up four, three, four if it hits, gives you a pretty much a hundred damage combo. And uh, the only difference is you don't throw the electric out as soon as the move hits because you want the same amount of hits for every combo to ensure the same wall carry and same scaling, same pushback, um, all of that stuff. So the second kick there counts as you hitting the electric as your second hit, say you were to do like forward uh, four, four, two into electric. That's the same amount of hits as up forward three, four, right? So the combo is the same after the first two hits for pretty much every single launcher Heiachi has. Uh, even for a move like uh, a Fujin 2, this little mini electric here, same exact combo. So there you go. It's it, and as soon as he hits the wall, the, the Fujin 2 that carries him all the way to the wall, you can then do this shit and go into the fucking standard uh, wall combo that you're going to do no matter what. So fantastic fucking combo utility with a Hachi because you only really need to know one combo 
for the entire character's move list, which I know a lot of characters share that in common, but with Ayachi it's specifically quite nice, because the character's already quite difficult to pilot in general. Um, adding the f adding extra combos that you need to memorize on top of that uh, that all probably require insane execution to to do properly uh, it's just needless complication on top of an already complicated character so it's nice that he has copy paste combos for his entire move list now we're going to discuss quickly uh, his warrior instinct which is the install that heihachi gets once he has three tokens so you get one token every time you enter heat and I recommend you enter this state by pressing 1 plus 4 um, as soon as you can, safely, in the final round of every match. If you get to final round, use Warrior Instinct. If it doesn't go to final round, if they kill you before it gets to final round, or you kill them before it gets to final round, then I wouldn't say bother with this shit, because it doesn't amp Heihachi up nearly as much as people say it does, even though it does... Uh, add a lot of interesting utility for Ayachi's move list. For example, this is now just a standard launcher. So this now means that Ayachi gets down forward 2-1 as a natural combo on uh, after your opponent eats forward 4 while crouching. You can just do this shit and they will fucking, they're gonna eat shit. Down forward 2-1 is guaranteed here. You get all that guaranteed. All that is guaranteed. With, if your opponent is crouching and you hit them with forward 4, then you get an automatic 86 damage combo for pretty much free. That's not a hard combo to do. So, really fucking strong utility there. The other thing Warrior Instinct does that I think is nice is that 442 now comes out um, with a little bit more... Uh, a little a little more damage. It's pretty significant. So, and the uh, the main takeaway from this, so 442 gains a little more utility. Uh, you also get um, a safe health sweep. This now goes through their legs on block. I can demonstrate that real quick. As you can see, the Hell Sweep is completely safe. Pretty insane that that's a thing, but it is. Uh, so there's that. You also have this, which is still minus 13 on block, but it's basically Ayachi's Rage Drive. It takes away all of their gray health, which it, this stance, or this install, doesn't allow for any gray health to begin with anyways, as you can see in combos, if I launch them. No gray health to be seen whatsoever. Only against the wall do you see gray health start appearing, but in regular ass combos, you don't get any gray health. So that's probably the biggest thing about this uh, Warrior Instinct that is the biggest significance as far as I'm concerned, the lack of gray health that it allows for the opponent to to uh, have to then come back from once they land a heat engager, it just doesn't exist. So, really fucking significant tool for uh, the gray health factor and the fact that Eihachi now gains the ability to remove their gray health on top of that in the middle of a combo if he wants to. I mean, pretty fucking significant shit there. You also have a 12 frame punish now that is pretty fucking devastating because your 442 is souped up, so now you get this is your 12 frame punish. 58 damage for a 12 frame punish is pretty fucking crazy. So, yeah, you do gain some utility with the Warrior Instinct stats or the install, uh, but I don't recommend doing it until the final round of any match unless you just want to kill your opponent and, and, and waste it early, that's fine too, but it, 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 if you want to get the most utility out of Warrior Instinct, wait until the final round, and then the, all the moves that I just went over there are pretty much the ones you want to go for when in this stance. The combos change slightly at the wall, because once you bound them with Heat Burst, this is going to be your ender typically into this. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the way to go. I mean, you delete their gray health, and then you stomp on their fucking face, and you throw electricity at them, and, you know, they're dead. It's really fucking cool. So, there's there's that. The the Warrior Instinct mode is not completely fucking broken. Ayachi doesn't 
become a uh, Super Saiyan 2 Heihachi like I initially thought he did. He just becomes a souped up version of Heihachi, like uh, Kaioken Heihachi, you could say. Not even really Super Saiyan. Um, very, very strong, but not broken. So it's it's fairly balanced. If anything, I think that the one thing they could change about this, um, maybe get rid of the gray health, deleting utility. That's probably the most broken aspect about it. Uh, the fact that there is no gray health in combos. I mean, that's pretty massive. Until they get to the wall. I don't know. It's pretty fucking huge. The gray health concept in this entire for this entire stance or this entire install is the most powerful aspect about it, I think. So use it for that reason, and then take advantage of some of the cool tools you have, like this shit. Fucking awesome. You know, I love that. Just the 12 frame punish. That's fucking 58 damage. And if you get that shit against the wall, the damage adds up super quick. So really cool utility in that aspect, but. Uh, not as busted as people seem to think it is, for sure. And the final thing I want to talk about with Ayachi briefly is how to approach certain matchups. I'm not going to go through every matchup in the game because that would just take fucking forever. But say you're playing the, uh, the Amishi Mamura match. You're playing against, say, Kazuya. Heihachi, to me, is stronger than Kazuya because he allows for... Uh, he's got everything he Kazuya does minus the Hell Sweep. He's got a solid demon pile, he's got a really good electric that's also the 13 frame electric. He has more launching utility with uh, with other launchers, like 442, back 4 on counter hit. Um, Hell Sweep can launch on counter hit as well. Uh, Kazuya's only really launches against the wall. So, Heiachi gets pretty decent uh, utility compared to Kazuya, but he also just has better tools in the neutral because he has somewhat of a poke game. His pokes aren't as amazing as they were in Tekken 7, but stay in Kazuya's face and poke him to death. And if you choose to be defensive, you're playing into Kazuya's hands. So use your uh, pressure utility moves that Heiachi now has and destroy Kazuya that way. If you're going against Steve, Heiachi has a bit of a harder time because he's still a defensive version of the character. Heiachi's never been this defensive in a Tekken game before. So Steve has a pretty decent time at beating Heiachi. Um, since Heiachi doesn't have any lows, he's just got a lot of highs and mids, Steve's pretty fucking good at counter hitting a lot of Heiachi's stuff. So be careful of the Steve matchup. Make sure you're, you're, uh, you're playing very carefully around Steve. Uh, you can't really pressure Steve. Steve can pressure you, so you're going to have to be more defensive against Steve. Uh, but Steve eats Mishimas for breakfast, so let's be real. It's a Mishima matchup for Steve is a piece of fucking cake. For certain matchups, you need to be very, very defensive. You can't just rush down every single opponent in the game like you could in Tekken 7. An, of an offensive, aggressive rush down Heihachi was very effective in Tekken 7. Despite having shitty lows, the mids he had is, uh, has at his disposal in Tekken 7 uh, more than uh, uh, make up for the fact that his lows are, ter are just terrible. And Hell Sweep is still a thing. It, it exists. It's fast. So it, it's a good low to use if you just go for the Hell Sweep as like a low poke. So you're going to play Heiachi quite defensively against the majority of the cast. Um, so make sure that Electric is your best friend. If you want to pilot Heiachi effectively, 1-1-2 and Electric are your go-to's. Those two moves will save your ass. And then mix in all the other moves that I showed earlier with the top 10 to 15 moves, his homing moves, his heat utility, and, and really nail down his combos. They're, the combos are very difficult because it's Heihachi, but they're exceptionally damaging. He has some of the highest damage in the game. Two combos will kill everyone. So even if they have some recovered health, uh, the second combo is going to kill you. You have 180 health points in this game, and Heihachi does 110 something every time he launches you, most of the time. So it, it's fucking crazy how much damage this guy does. So you can really take advantage of the fact that he does a lot of damage and avoid the entire uh, concept of counterplaying to this character just by getting a good launch, a well-timed launch on the opponent. If your opponent isn't playing perfectly, they make a mistake and they get launched, you will most likely win that round. One launch is sometimes all it takes with Ayachi. But he's very linear, like I said. So Lily is a bad matchup. Zafin is a bad matchup. Chaoyu, Alisa, these are bad matchups for Heihachi because they have a lot of movement and they have all of ev evasive tools and Heihachi's not really very good at getting around all of that stuff. 
Uh, especially movement. Good sidesteps and good backdashes will outright kill Heihachi. His range is about as good as Kazuya's, and his uh, linearity is, I would say, even worse than Kazuya's, because he's at least Kazuya can do some significant damage and, and does track very well to sidestep right. Almost nothing he has tracks to sidestep left. Heihachi has a few more tools that track the sidestep left, like back four, for example, but sidestep right will outright kill that move. And it kills a lot of his other uh, m moves in his in his move list, sidestep right. So sidestep left, sidestep right, they're both very effective against Heihachi, depending on the move he does, but he doesn't have a whole lot of moves that track, to be honest. He's very linear, so that's his biggest weakness. So just make sure you maintain your pressure if you're able to pressure your opponent versus, say, a Kazuya. If you're not able to pressure the opponent versus, say, a Steve or a Dragonov, then you want to back off and play Heihachi like a defensive Mishima. You have a little more room to breathe when you're in Warrior Instinct or when you're in Heat Mode, but outside of that, you kind of want to chill out, chill out and move back and just and keep your cool because he's he's more defensive now than he's ever been. Closing thoughts on the character, I think Heihachi is probably the most fun I've had in Tekken 8, uh, along with Kazuya, those two characters. These, the, I don't know man, Mishimas are just a fucking blast in general, but Heihachi is, in, I love what they've done with this character. He is more fun now, to me, than he's ever been in Tekken 7 or older Tekkens, because of the interesting utility he has with the heat now, his warrior instinct is a fine addition, and the, the tools they've added outside of those two things are just super interesting. The fact that he has a low poke that he can throw out now randomly with down back three to create a little bit of damage and not risk his life by going low. I mean, that's pretty fucking significant. He's never had anything like that before. So they've really added some interesting things to Heihachi. They made him a lot more defensive, but the defensiveness, if you're good at it and you understand matchups in this game, you can go real far with Heihachi. The God of Destruction Heihachi players and the Tekken Gods and Tekken God Supremes and the, you know, basically everybody, Tekken Emperor with Heihachi and up, is exceptionally good at knowing the matchups in this game. And if you know your matchups and you know your shit, you can dominate with this character. Do I think he's S tier? Uh, no. Absolutely not. I don't think it's it's possible for Heihachi to be S tier right now because I think, first of all, he's still exceptionally hard to use. Uh, you have to learn electric. You have to apply it perfectly at all times. You have to learn his combos. They're very difficult to do. So there's a lot of difficult shit with this character. The fact that he's linear is difficult to get around. So you have to deal with that as well. Heihachi is, this, I'd say, maybe the second hardest, third hardest character in the game to use. I'm not sure. I can't really say uh, one way or the other. But he's up there with the top, top characters. Kazuya, Devilgen, Steve, and Brian. He's right there with them. Very, very difficult character, but he does a lot more damage than them, except for maybe Brian and Kazuya if you get a down forward two counter hit and you get a perfect electric. Obviously, that's gonna do some significant damage, but Heiachi gets that damage all the time with every launcher he does. So you don't need to get a perfectly timed just frame counter hit launch. You can just launch them and get insane damage. So, fantastic character for that but has a lot of weaknesses as well in his horrible lows and his linearity. So he's quite balanced. Very, very fine job they did on balancing this character. I think he's a solid A tier or high tier contender. Um, as far as strength in, in terms of Mishimas, I would have to say that the, if you want to include Jin, let's include Jin just for laughs. Jin is not a Mishima, but we'll place him nice and firmly at the top. Firmly in S tier is what I consider the third strongest character in the game right now. Uh, next to Dragonov and Nina. Uh, next under that would be Reyna. I still think Reyna has more utility than, uh, than Heihachi because she has still a better poke game. Uh, she's better at pressuring due to Raiden. And she's got a smaller hurt box, so she doesn't uh, have to worry about as many combos as Heihachi does. On top of that, she's a waifu character, so she has waifu tools. She has movement of waifus, so she can move around easier than Heihachi can. Better sidestep, better backdash. Rain is just stronger than the Mishimas in general, aside from Jin, because Rain is a female, so that gives her a, an inherent advantage in a lot of ways. But right under Reina, and almost neck and neck, I'd say, like hey, like they're this, real fucking close. Heiachi's right there. 
He's dead center in the middle of the Mishima's fantastic fucking character, has obvious glaring weaknesses that people can use, and then circumvent the opponent's offense using Ayachi. It's very uh, difficult to get around his counterplay, but he's extremely strong if you're able to do that. That's the trade-off. And then I would say Kazuya is under that because he's just insanely hard to play, doesn't have a neutral game really at all besides Demon Paw and Electric and Jab, which is terrible. Um, the, the Demon Paw and Electric are, are not usable when your opponent is beating the shit out of Kazuya in his face, staying real close to Kazuya. He doesn't have the time to get those tools out, and those are really the only tools he can do in the neutral or to try to run his offense. So, very easy, obvious counterplay to Kazuya, so he's under Heiachi not quite as strong and then Devilgen's sitting nice and firmly at the bottom because he just doesn't have any power mids uh, his damage compared to Kazuya's and Heiachi's is a little bit lackluster and he just uh, he, he, his only good low is launch punishable and basically kills him on block so uh, Devilgen is definitely deserving of some major buffs but uh, I don't think Kazuya deserves any buffs, and I certainly don't think Heihachi deserves any buffs or nerfs. They're both both characters. Kazuya and Heihachi are fantastic as they are. I don't think they need any changes whatsoever. So, very, very well done to Bandai Namco on the development of this character. I've spent enough time with him now that I think I can say that for sure. They did an amazing job, and um, that about does it for this video. So let me know what you think down below. Hopefully this helps out. Uh, everybody trying to learn Heiachi, congrats. He's a fucking great character. I recommend him to anybody because he's so much fun. Uh, he's my second favorite character in all of Tekken, and I'm so happy that he's back. So please, leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. It really helps me out with the algorithm. Join the Discord. It's in the description. Click that link and join the Discord. Uh, follow the uh, other YouTube channel I have if you uh, like the music, the Deep Voice Guy channel that I do. So all that shit is in the description. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Keep rocking out and keep gaming.